this kind of a right angle isosceles prism that you are seeing in the picture is called a total reflecting prism although there can be other kinds of prism where total internal reflection takes place but this right angled isosceles prism specifically is called a total reflecting prism now this kind of a total reflecting prism basically has three uses it is used to deviate a ray of light through 90 degrees it is used to deviate a ray of light also through 180 degrees and it is used to get an erect image of an inverted object so let us see how a total reflecting prism is used to deviate a ray of light through 90 degrees so we have a beam of light denoted by p p dash here which is incident on the face a b of the reflecting prism now since the angle of incidence on the face a b is zero degrees since this is normal incidence so what happens is the ray of light passes undeviated and hits the face a c of the prism at what angle of course the angle of incidence being 45 degrees as you can see now since the critical angle for glass air pair is 42 degrees so therefore this angle of incidence being greater than 42 degrees therefore what happens is the ray of light suffers total internal reflection inside the prism as you can see at these points the ray of light after suffering total internal reflection inside the prism hits the face bc again at an angle of incidence equal to zero degrees that is at normal incidence at these points so therefore the ray of light passes undeviated through the face bc of the prism also so thereby you can see that the ray of light is deviated through 90 degrees this action of the prism in which the ray of light is deviated through 90 degrees is used in a periscope let us now see how a total reflecting prism is used to deviate a ray of light or rather a beam of light through 180 degrees now pq is an object here from which a beam of light is incident on the face ac of the prism at these points as you can see so since the ray of light from pq falls normally on the face ac at these points since it's normal incidence the ray of light enters the prism undeviated and strikes the face a b of the prism at an angle of incidence 45 degrees as you can see here since you are in class 10 you can check for the values of the angles yourself so the angle of incidence is 45 degrees which again is greater than the value of critical angle for glass air pair of media so what happens is the beam of light undergoes total internal reflection at these points inside the prism and it moves in this path as you can see now again the ray of light after undergoing the first total internal reflection at these points it hits the face bc of the prism as you can see again at an angle of incidence equal to 45 degrees so again what happens is the beam of light suffers total internal reflection at these points and it again comes out of the face ac of the prism undeviated since it is again normal incidence at these points so the ray of light passes through the face ac again undeviated and thereby the image p dash q dash is formed which of course is inverted so an inverted image p dash q dash is formed so inside the prism we can see total internal reflection is taking place on the two faces of the prism and thereby the ray of light gets deviated by 180 degrees now this action of the prism is used in binoculars and cameras to invert the image without any loss in intensity of light remember now let us see how a total reflecting prism is used to get an erect image of an inverted object so as you can see pq here 
is the inverted object. Now, rays of light coming from PQ, that is from the rarer medium, enters the prism, which is the denser medium. So, when ray of light coming from a rarer medium enters the denser medium, we know the ray of light bends towards the normal and that is exactly what we see happening at these points so these rays of light after undergoing refraction at these points on the face a b of the prism what happens is they hit the face a c of the prism as you can see at these points now the angle of incidence at these points being greater than the value of the critical angle so therefore the rays of light they undergo total internal reflection at these points and thereby they come and hit the face BC of the prism. Now again on the face BC of the prism at these points you can see the value of angle of incidence here is very small. You can make out it is lesser than the value of the critical angle. Therefore the ray of light coming from the denser medium and going towards the rarer medium now they undergo refraction at these points. And eventually the ray of light comes out of the prism in this direction and thereby we have an erect image p dash q dash formed of the inverted object pq now let us also see how total internal reflection takes place in an equilateral prism so a ray of light pq is incident on the face ab of the prism now since this is normal incidence at this point so to say angle p q r so to say angle p q a is 90 degrees now since this is normal incidence on the face ab that is the angle of incidence is 90 degrees so therefore the ray of light moves undeviated or enters the prism undeviated and thereby hits the face ac at this point r now, the angle A of the prism is 60 degrees as you can see and angle AQR which is this angle here is also 90 degrees which means angle ARQ this angle has to be 30 degrees. Since the dashed line here this line it represents the normal to the face AC therefore this angle being 30 degrees the angle of incidence on the face AC has to be equal to 60 degrees. So we can see the angle of incidence on the denser medium is equal to 60 degrees which is greater than the value of critical angle for glass air pair of media which is 42 degrees. So therefore at the point R on the face AC of the prism the ray of light undergoes total internal reflection. So to say the angle of reflection is also 60 degrees. So the ray of light we see is moving along RS now. So ray of light RS is incident on the face BC of the prism normally that is at an angle of incidence equal to 0 degrees as we can see at this point. So therefore the ray of light RS travels undeviated along ST. So this is how total internal reflection takes place in an equilateral prism. Now let us see how total internal reflection takes place on a right angled prism. Now this prism is right angled but it's not right angled isosceles prism remember that. This, this is 90 degrees as you can see this is 60 degrees this is 30 degrees angle. So the ray of light PQ is incident on the face BC of the prism. It is incident normally therefore the ray of light PQ moves undeviated inside the prism and hits the face AC at point R at an angle of incidence equal to 60 degrees as you can see. If you want to know how this angle is 60 degrees you can start from here. This angle is 60 degrees, this angle is 90 degrees so therefore this angle over here that is angle QRC has to be 30 degrees. Now since this dotted line, this dotted line represents the normal to the face AC of the prism therefore this angle being 30 degrees the angle of incidence has to be equal to 60 degrees so what happens is since the angle of incidence on the denser medium is greater than the value of the critical angle for glass air pair of media which is 42 degrees so therefore the ray of light 
at point R undergoes total internal reflection and moves along Rs as you can see. Now this dashed line is the normal to the face AB of the prism and you can see the angle of incidence therefore is 30 degrees which is lesser than the value of the critical angle for glass air pair of media so therefore the ray of light undergoes refraction at point S and thereby moves along ST. Now if you want to know how the angle of incidence on the face AB at point S is equal to 30 degrees let us start from this angle here. So this angle A is 30 degrees as you can see and here angle S is 90 degrees so therefore angle A M S has to be 60 degrees as you can see in the picture. Now if this angle is 60 degrees so therefore angle S M R has to be 120 degrees as I've shown over here. Why? Because A M C or A M R is a straight line. The straight line has angle 180 degrees out of 180 this already is 60 so therefore the other half that is angle S M R has to be 120 degrees. So if this is 120 degrees and we know this angle here is 60 degrees which means angle S R M has to be 30 degrees. So this angle is 30 degrees. So look at triangle S M R now. In triangle S M R angle S M R itself is 120 degrees as I have shown here and angle S R M is 30 degrees. So this angle is 30 degrees. So therefore the remaining angle of the triangle which is angle M S R has to be equal to 30 degrees. Now let us look at some applications and some effects of total internal reflection. Now you all must be familiar with the periscope which is a device that is used in submarines especially to check from inside the submarine what is going on over the water surface. Initially in a periscope plane mirrors were used like you can see one here and the other here. So a ray of light coming from a tree say for example gets reflected by the first mirror and it hits the second mirror and thereby reaches the eye of the observer. Now since the plane mirror absorbs some of the incident light so therefore the image that is seen by the observer is not very clear is not very distinct. So therefore instead of a plane mirror these days what is used is a prism is used in a periscope that is a right angled isocellus prism because total internal reflection undergoes in a right angled isocellus prism and thereby the intensity of the incident light is not lost. So therefore a very clear and bright image of the object is seen. So this is one of the applications of total internal reflection. The glitter in a diamond that we see is again because of total internal reflection. Now we need not go into the specifics but you need to remember these applications or effects that total internal reflection produces. The other effect is that of a mirage in a desert. A mirage is an illusion that is seen on very hot days especially in desert areas. Now to give you another application optical fibers that are used these days to transmit information from one point to another. These optical fibers also works in the principle of total internal reflection. 